talk about potential energy. There are all kinds of potential energy, but only two main ones we're going to talk about. We've all experienced the change in potential energy in a swing. We've all seen dart guns that are able to shoot out darts at some pretty cool speeds, or even a bow and arrow. Now, potential energy is energy due to position. Gravitational potential energy is defined to be MGH. Now, sometimes we're going to use uh, GPE, but I'm really too lazy to keep that up. So, I'm just going to do PE is MGH. Where MG, you remember, is the weight of the object. So, that's FG. And H is the height above some kind of arbitrary reference level. Now, folks, you can pick your reference level. Make it easy. You can make it, usually what you want to make, you want to put your reference level at some point where one of your potential energies will be zero. You can put your potential energy at the center of the Earth, but that's really going to complicate your calculations. You can put it on the moon, but once again, not easy. A lot of times on a pendulum, we're going to put our y equals zero at this point right here where the pendulum is um, vertical. Now the work done by external forces is equal to the change of potential energy. Is this starting to sound a little familiar? Um, so the work is the change in potential energy. So the work done to raise this young man from here to here is this change in potential energy. So it's PE, let's call this PE1, and this is PE2. So it's going to be PE2 minus PE1. This delta means change. Now, this is kind of cool. Potential energy only depends on the vertical change, not the path taken. So if I were to lift this straight up, the change in potential energy is the same as if I lifted up this incline. <coughs> so if I lift it up at a height h, and going back to our trig, we know that H is D sine theta. Oh my gosh, there's some ugly trig where theta is this angle. The work done is always going to be the same. The work due to gravity is going to be FG times H, which is MGH. Didn't we just do this? Now, elastic potential energy is what energy we have that is stored in a spring. That's all springs do is store and release energy. We can stretch a spring or compress a spring, and we're storing energy. This stored energy can do work on a, on a second object. Now, a string has some natural unstretched length. It's just, it's what we call its happy place. All right? So when a string is in its happy place, there's no forces acting on it. But as soon as I apply a force, okay, say I add this weight right here, then I can measure that force. And that force is equal to kx where K is called the spring constant. And this depends upon what kind of spring it is. All right, it's the stiffness of the, sp of the spring. Now, you get in cars all the time. You have very large spring constants in your cars. Otherwise, you'd be sitting on the road all the way to school. Um, the the springs we have in class, very small spring constants. Now, for a spring's constant, our units are newtons per meter. Just remember that. X in this equation is the distance the spring is compressed or 
uh, stretch. Now don't worry too much about the sign because the sign has to do with whether you're pulling it away or pushing it toward, which direction is positive, which direction is negative. So usually we just look at the magnitude of this force. So F equals Kx. We measure forces in newtons. We measure K in newtons per meter. And we measure X in meters, even if I give it to you in centimeters. Convert it. Now this uh, takes us to what is called Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law says a force that is stretched or compressed exerts an equal and opposite force, Newton's third law again, that is equal to minus uh, Kx. We call this a restoring force. It is not a constant. As a matter of fact, if I were to graph this, if I were to graph the restoring force versus x, I would get a straight line whose slope is equal to k. And again, this negative sign just gives us the direction of the force. Now, there is energy stored in springs. Um, if you go to the Colorado FET, this is a really cool LADO FET, P-H-E-T. This is a really cool demo. The energy stored in a spring is equal to 1 half kx squared. We won't go into all of the reasons why, but are you seeing this triangle here? Here's your energy. Okay. So this potential energy can be stored later. So a lot of times I'll just call it PE, and the spring is 1 half kx squared, where k is my spring constant, and x is how far I have stretched my spring from its happy place. 